Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the ICBA Cast featuring me, Jordan Bateman, Vice President of Communications for the Independent Contractors and Businesses Association. And Chris Gardner, President of ICBA. Chris, here we are with all of our toys. If you're, uh, if you're listening to this in audio, uh, you're really missing out. We have all nine of our Read Awards, won over the past two uh, right. Read Awards seasons, in front of us, including um, the big one, or the big two. Um, Chris, you and I went to Austin last week. We uh, lived uh, the Texas life and came home yes. with a schwack of hardware. Uh, it's, it's a great site. And uh, listen, the two big awards, Trade Association of the Year, uh, and uh, the best vi uh, advocacy video in North America. Uh, and that will actually, it's, it's Canada, the US, and Latin America. Mm -hmm. So uh, a great accomplishment for the yep. team. Uh, that's our big gas tax video. And as, as some of our uh, listeners will remember that uh, it's very funny. Mm -hmm. 400,000 views in the first 30 days. Yep. So it was great. Yeah, the campaign and election guys went crazy for it. They called it genius. They uh, promoted it as the number one thing in their recap of the Read Awards. And they interviewed me on their Facebook page uh, yesterday, or two days ago, right. uh, to talk about it. So they love, uh, they love seeing Canada's big ass get moving. Well, and listen, we were up against the best that the Republicans and the Democrats mm -hmm. and other organizations. But as everybody knows, there's a lot of money in, in U.S. politics, yeah. a lot of very sophisticated campaigns. So to, to think that the video won against that kind, of, that level of competition, uh, a great accomplishment for, uh, for ICBA. Yeah, and that's back-to-back -back great campaigns for us uh, in, for the Read Awards. In 2018, it was really about the pink slips of the Site C, right. Save Site C Dam uh, campaign. And then this year, it was more about the, uh, the big ass ad which was um, fantastic. Also, you know, one uh, you know Canadian video of the year, also one international web video where we were up against competition from Africa. Yeah. Um, you know, the Trade Association Award, though, to me, uh, is it's the coolest one because it, it really is a tribute to all the work, not just that we're doing here, but our training department, our advocacy department, yeah. our um, our benefits uh, administrators. It, it really was a joint effort to win that. Yeah. No, and it, it's a great accomplishment. <laughs> we set a high bar. Uh, yes. So this year we're going to have to work hard uh, to add to the Can I uh, just phone it in? I can't just phone it no. in for next year? No, no. it's not oh going to work. Oh my God. All right, well, let's talk about some of the campaigns we've got going on that could be contenders for next year. Who knows? Um, Chris, we are in court. Um, it seems like we're always in court against this, uh, frankly, right. stupid NDP government. Um, and this time it's over project labor agreements. Um, Wednesday morning, you were at a press conference with uh, Fiona Famuluk from uh, the RCA. You were there with uh, Ryan Bruce from CLAC uh, and a bunch of other stakeholders. Tell us about the court case. Where are we at? So court case is, um, as people will be familiar with, the NDP government changed the procurement policy. And no longer, uh, when they go to tender for parentally funded construction contracts and other infrastructure projects, uh, is the government going to invite uh, every construction company and engineering company to submit proposals. Mm -hmm. Those days are gone. Uh, what they're saying is, effectively, uh, they're going to freeze out 85% of the men and women in construction in this province um, by, ins by ensuring that the procurement policy now states that um, you have to, workers have to be members of a, a building trades union that represents only 15% of workers in this province. Uh, workers are gonna effectively become employees of a new crown corporation. Mm -hmm. So they're going to leave their existing benefit packages behind, leave their employer behind. Leave their profit sharing if they have it. And bonus programs, fill out new new benefits uh, documentation. It's confusing, it's complicated. It's going to cost taxpayers more, at least $100 million mm -hmm. on, the, on the Patella Bridge. Just in bureaucracy. It's not about the guys actually getting more money, the rank That's and right. file, it's about bureaucracy. Well, it, it will be more bureaucratic. Yeah. We're not. Wages will not be higher. We're not going to, no, no one, there's not going to be any more uh, women hired or Indigenous people hired or, or young people hired. There won't be any more training done. Uh, it'll just be uh, increased costs and bureaucracy. And it really is, it's a backroom deal that was cut with the billing trades. There was no panel established that traveled the province and said, hey, um, how can we deliver construction projects more effectively for communities and more efficiently for taxpayers? There was no white paper that came out and said, hey, we want your feedback. It was a backroom deal with the building trades done in secret. This is one of the most offensive policies to come out of Victoria in decades uh, under any government. And we're challenging it in court. And uh, day one was Wednesday. Typical of the provincial government, uh, when hmm. they go to court, 
um, they want uh, you know the people that they're uh, they're challenging to be to respond quickly and move the agenda forward. When, when the tables are turned, they use every tool in the book, every legal maneuver to delay the process, to drag it out, and uh, that's what we're up against. But we're committed to this fight, and we're joined by, as you mentioned, uh, progressive unions like CLAC, uh, Canada West Construction Union, BC Construction Association, Vancouver Regional Construction Association. Um, the CFIB, BC, yeah. Uh, the C, uh, yeah, the CFIB and the BC Chamber of Commerce. So that's a and, lot. And companies and individual workers as well. Yeah, th that's yeah. a lot stacked up against the Ministry of Transportation and the Building Trades Unions. Yeah. Um, so all of those forces aligned against them. Uh, it's very simple. We're we're not all wrong. No. Um, and uh, and so hopefully. Uh, we can move this forward as, as fast as we can and get a decision from the BC Supreme Court. Now, one of the interesting things I've heard is from some uh, some of the workers. These aren't people who own the companies, but maybe they they participate in profit sharing or uh, or they're a CLAC employee. But you know, they leave. Uh, many of them have left building trades unions to go to the private uh, companies because they get paid more. That's right. And the one thing about private companies, if they're not subject to these union deals, is they can pay their best performers more money. Uh, and they do, you know. Wayne Gretzky gets the ice, got the ice time for the Edmonton Oilers. These guys, the best of the best, get the best money. They get the best profit sharing. They get the best benefits. The unions want to knock them all down to their, you know, basic level. That's bad news for them. There's also a safety concern where you talk to guys, and you know, they've worked on the same crews with the same people for years. They understand how each other work. They know, you know, instinctively where the other people will be. You know, there's good communication. All of a sudden, you take that away from them, and you throw them into a, you know, completely, uh, you know, unknown team with an unknown, um, you know, set of union rules. And all of a sudden, you know, they're kind of bumping up into each other and don't really feel as safe or as confident in their work environment as yeah. they would. Well, you, you, and you raised a, an interesting point about how the unions, uh, where, where workers will often leave the building trades unions yep. to go to uh, uh, a company that's organized by a different union or a non-union company to work. Because the way the building trades operate, if, they're, if, if the project is not unionized by one and, 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 and the work isn't being done by one of their, their unions, um, their members stay home. Mm -hmm. They don't work. And if the, if the member does decide to go do a job on a non-unionized site or a site that, that's, got, that's unionized by a competing union, uh, that threatens their status in the building trades. Yeah. And so effectively, um, you can be, there, right now 76% of our members are saying the biggest challenge facing construction contractors is a shortage of workers. But the building trades will turn around and say, well, we've got workers sitting at home not working. Yeah, because they won't let them work. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's very unfair, it's very uh, and it's a, their labor model is from a bygone era, the 1960s. As Tom Sigurdsson keeps reminding everyone, you know, the, the projects were built in the 1960s under these yeah. agreements. Yes, but we've moved on. Yes, uh, y younger workers want more flexibility. Yeah. They want more choice. They are not. They don't think the same way and behave the same way. Have the same preferences. Yeah. In terms of the workplace and, as and look, and employers can't get away with what they got away with back then. In the That's age right. of social media, immediately every, any worker has power. They can immediately uh, cut the knees out from under their employer. Walk uh, down the street. Easily. Look at listen. Brad Barrett wrote a great piece. Uh, Brad Bennett, pardon me, wrote a great piece about this, um, debunking Tom Sigerson's suggestion that WAC Bennett would use That's these right. kind of project labor agreements today. He wouldn't. Uh, the market has changed. So watch for that. Uh, this case, though, this particular three-day hearing is about the NDP trying to kick it back to their uh, hand-appointed Labor Relations Board, yeah. which, of course, would be skewed heavily in their favor because they appointed them. Yeah. Um, they actually don't saying, want the court We're saying to we, hear want, it. we want the court to hear it, not, uh, so not your flunkies on the Labor Relations Board. Can I say right. flunkies? Is that too tough? Mm, well, you can. Okay, I can. I'm their president, so I get to say that stuff. By the way, Chris and I visited Dealey Plaza when we were uh, in Dallas. Yeah. Saw where uh, President Kennedy was uh, was shot. I asked him if it made him nervous as a, as a president to be in that square, but he said no. He felt confident. He was. We were, we were on the grassy knoll. We were, we were literally on the grassy. the grassy knoll. Yeah. First we were on a grassy knoll, and then we realized that wasn't the grassy knoll. We had to go a little further down. That's right, but we That's found right. it. That's right. It was good stuff. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the Build Massey campaign, another campaign we're working on. So. Massey Tunnel, uh, desperately need replacements, celebrating its 60th birthday this year. If you want to read a great horror story, read the Delta uh, City Council report on what would happen to the Massey Tunnel in an earthquake. Yeah. Spoiler alert, it would snap up and float downstream. Don't be in the Massey Tunnel during an earthquake. Um, despite the fact that there's a ton of preload on the uh, road and the BC Liberals were forging ahead with a uh, billion dollar replacement, a 10-lane bridge for that highway, uh, the NDP killed it. 
uh, stopped it um, and uh, now say that they are reviewing it for a business case, but really they're just punting it down the road. That's right. We'll, we'll be another decade before that pro before the Massey Tunnel is replaced. And it, it goes to a, a, ch a big challenge we have in British Columbia and Canada. We take too long to make decisions on, on building infrastructure. We debate things endlessly. We don't come to a decision. Um, the Patella Bridge is going to be replaced and construction will start soon. Uh, but that's an 83-year-old bridge that's falling into the Fraser. And uh, we've waited far too long. And who pays the price? Commuters pay the price and taxpayers pay the price. And uh, we've got to find a better way to have these discussions and get these projects built faster if we're going to yeah. be competitive and improve the quality of life for, uh, for British Columbians in, in areas where you have, in this case, uh, one of Canada's worst traffic jams. Yeah, vitally important, Dargery. Uh, if you live outside the Lower Mainland, the Massey Tunnel connects Richmond to Delta. That may not sound like much, except that Richmond has the International Airport and is also kind of the pathway into Vancouver proper. Mm -hmm. um, Delta has the Delta Port, which is a huge shipping terminal. Yep. Uh, it has the BC Ferries, which is a huge transportation uh, node, obviously, but uh, cut off, choked uh, by this tiny little tunnel in the middle, That's right. um, which was revolutionary for its time in 1960s, uh, but uh, has long since been... Uh, uh, There's a pattern. Everything's changed since yeah. the 1960s. Exactly, exactly. Everything's changed since from the 60s except the NDP, apparently. Okay, let's talk about politics here, um, Chris. SNC-Lavalin, the whole thing continues on. And this week, Jody Wilson-Raybould uh, really mesmerized the uh, political chattering class of the nation with her, uh, I thought, like, astoundingly tough testimony against yeah. uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and his, uh, I'll say his flunkies, uh, and the pressure she felt to give SNC-Lavalin a bit of a sweetheart deal. Yeah, you, you know, her, her testimony reflects what the public wants to see from elected officials. They want to see people standing up for uh, principle. They want to see government that's fair, that's open and transparent. What they don't want to see is backroom deals where friends reward special interests. Yeah. And, um, and that's unfortunately happens too often at every level of, of government in this country. And it's part of the reason why people are so cynical uh, about public life and about elected officials and about what happens to their tax dollars. Uh, so I thought her testimony was, uh, was refreshing. And, um, and if it was uh, someone of lesser character, uh, the deal would have been cut. Yep. Nobody would have known about it. Uh, and the government would have gone on and say, yeah, we're committed to doing politics differently when the exact opposite is, is really the truth. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think the average Canadian is following this as closely as, as maybe we are. But I do think that, you know, Trudeau's reputation is taking a major hit among yeah. everyday Canadians. So how does this play out? I mean, we're headed into fall election season. Yeah. They're in the House now. I think both Andrew Scheer and Jagmeet Singh have landed pretty significant blows on the uh, Prime Minister over this. He looks like uh, he looks like a reeling politician at this point. Yeah, it's hard to say you're going to do politics differently when, in fact, you're doing it the way yeah. it's been practiced for decades, and, and the way in which uh, has turned off so many Canadians uh, from participating in, in public life. Um, it is the worst of, of uh, backroom deals that we're seeing play out here. Uh, if they had their way, uh, the backroom deal would have been cut, mm -hmm. and um, and against the uh, the independent objective advice uh, that the Ministry of Justice was giving to the minister and that the minister agreed with. Yeah. I do think it's funny how the Trudeau Liberals are floating that this will actually help them in Quebec because SNC-Lavalin is such an important employer there. Although we're starting to see that turn in some of the uh, op-eds out of Quebec saying, look, guys, we, we can't be, we can't reward this kind of behavior no matter who it's on uh, the behalf of. But look, like for every seat that they may pick up in Quebec, they're going to lose one or two more in the rest of Canada. You know, Canadians are already frustrated with corruption, and uh, many Canadians, especially Westerners, are frustrated with Quebec getting a special, uh, a special deal in Confederation. Well, you know, so what, here's what's playing out. The government will say, well, these 9,000 jobs are, are, are important, and we, couldn't, we can't afford to lose them. And okay, 9,000 jobs are important, yeah. no matter what. How which. about for the oil patch guys yeah. who've all lost their jobs because of this government? Well, that's exactly right. So we, we've lost 100,000 jobs yeah. you know, in our energy okay. sector in this country. It's on its knees. It's being hollowed yeah. out. And we're oh, by God, GM, we got to save that. By God, SNC Lavalin, we got to right. break the law to save that. Yeah, and so the the the, the, yeah. the challenge, the age-old challenge with Confederation, where the West is left out, has been revealed uh, yeah. in this uh, in this issue. And and it's uh, you know if you're if you're a supporter of Canada's energy sector, if you're a Western Canadian, uh, it's uh, it's 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 very sad indeed. Yeah.
Are you suggesting we uh, let the Eastern bastards freeze in the dark? Well, I'm suggesting <laughs> that, uh, that I understand that sentiment completely. Yes, yes, no, yeah. absolutely. Now, and that's not just because we were hanging out with Brett Wilson. We, uh, we found oh, this beforehand. That's right. Um, Brett Wilson was at BuildX, gave a speech. I was downstairs. I didn't get to hear it, but uh, seemed to be getting good reviews online. Yeah, you know, he, was, uh, he, he talked about these very types mm -hmm. of issues where, you know, investment jobs and opportunity in, in Western Canada uh, are being shortchanged because we don't have, we have a failure of political leadership at the federal level when it comes to our energy sector uh, to, to get projects approved. Um, and uh, we don't have a major pipeline approved in this country. It, it, Northern Gateway was canceled. Um, Energy East was canceled. Keystone XL is not being built. And uh, Kinder Morgan is mired in, in litigation and challenge. And uh, it's hard to see how shovels are gonna be in the ground on that project anytime soon. So our oil, our, our resource is landlocked, and uh, we're, the Americans are picking up uh, that oil uh, at a significant discount to world markets. Great gift to our American friends. Uh, meanwhile, their energy sector is on fire, uh, and that's where all the investment is leaving Canada. It's going to the United States. Yeah, and taking the jobs with them. Yeah. Uh, speaking of jobs, Jagmeet Singh has a new one, Burnaby South uh, mm -hmm. MP. Um, Chris, I'm frustrated a little bit by the continuing chatter over uh, by the analysts on this that somehow um, the Trans Mountain Pipeline was a major guiding issue uh, in this particular riding. I point out that it's Burnaby North that actually hosts the terminal, not Burnaby South. Yeah. Um, certainly not a mistake that they would make in Toronto about two different Toronto ridings, but yeah. do you think Jagmeet Singh is an MP today because of the Trans Mountain Pipeline? No, I think that's lazy journalism. Yeah. I, think, I think he's, the, he's uh, an MP today because... Say it's fake news. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the Liberal campaign imploded, yeah. right? Yeah. It imploded right, uh, right as, as the Jody Wilson-Raybould SNC-Lavalin issue unfolded right in the middle of the by-election, so um, difficult territory for a Conservative candidate. Um, and Jagmeet Singh uh, benefited from that, so um, I don't think it was at all to do anything at all to do with Kinder Morgan. And Keith Baldry's floating the rumor that Nathan Cullen is not going to run again for re-election, so we'll run for MLA in the next NDP provincial NDP election. Well, he could very well, uh, you know. I mean, you think of it from David Nathan e. Cullen's like perspective. That. He won't, uh, because you, if you think that uh, John Horgan runs again for re-election, well, let's just assume that that he wins. Um, then that's probably his last term and there'll be a leadership race. Uh, if he doesn't win, there'll definitely be a leadership uh, uh, convention and, um, and uh, obviously Nathan Cullen will be well positioned to, to challenge for that, uh, for that position. Yeah. yeah, which would not make uh, Dave Eby happy. Although I did enjoy uh, Vaughn Palmer's piece earlier this week on Dave Eby getting his butt kicked in court over um, trying to stop the uh, Albertans from uh, passing a law uh, restricting oil flow to, to BC. Uh, David Eby is an activist, <laughs> yeah. and he's, he's not an attorney general, and uh, and he's brought that same flavor to uh, uh, to his position, and unfortunately that's reflected in the in, in certainly how they they respond to our our petitions, which is to use every legal maneuver to delay, mm -hmm. delay, and delay. They did it on prop rep. Would not they they kept saying to, to us, uh, we're not ready. We need more time, uh, and they avoided getting into court on prop rep uh, for eight months, yeah. which is completely ridiculous given all the time and energy they spent uh, on, uh, on proportional representation. Mm -hmm. They're doing the same thing on, um, on the project labor agreements. Uh, so, and they were, you know, they've, they've issued the uh, reference case to the BC Court of Appeal and Kinder Morgan, and, um, and now we've got um, uh, the challenges with, uh, with one of their court cases uh, being thrown out. And mm -hmm. it's, it's all an activist agenda. It's not, it's not, it's not grounded in, uh, in solid legal principles. No, exactly. Uh, that's exactly the point. Um, finally, uh, BC budget was a couple weeks ago now, but uh, kind of a shocking headline in the Financial Post today. Um, Bloomberg News reporting that Canada's growth essentially cratered in Q4 yeah, of 2018. Uh, what was expected to be a two and a half, or maybe even a three percent growth rate, was actually 0 0.1. You know, the the, the winter is here. We we've been saying that. Yeah. We've been saying the storm clouds are on the horizon. Winter is coming. And uh, you cannot put the energy sector on its knees in this country and not think there's going to be consequences in terms of lost investment, jobs, and opportunity. You cannot say in British Columbia that you're going to raise an extra $6 billion in taxes 
a new tax or an increase in existing tax every three and a half weeks and not think there won't be economic con consequences, yeah. not think investors will say it's too difficult to get things done, we're going to invest our dollars somewhere else or we're just not, or we're just going to wait. Um, you can't have every level of government monkeying around in the housing markets. That's right. Not just in BC, but across the country. Municipalities adding red tape, adding more taxes, yeah. provincial governments like the NDP adding more taxes, and then you know the federal government monkeying with uh, mortgage stress test rules. And expect right. the housing market to continue to power the economy. Well, that, you know, the, the, this government's been very clear. Um, their 30 point plan for affordability does nothing to increase supply, yeah. does nothing. Um, and so, as a result, they, they've been very clear in saying they want to choke off the development industry. Yep. Uh, they don't like those kinds of jobs. Developers have made too much money. Um, so, I don't know how you uh, uh, reduce the, the challenge of affordability. In, in, and address that for the middle class or first-time home buyers if you're not going to put more housing stock on the market. Yeah, look, they're, uh, they're grabbing uh, money in, uh, out of the speculation tax, stuffing it into general revenue and spending it on other things, not spending it on housing, and they're not actually encouraging anyone to return things to the market. Right. The empty homes tax in Vancouver, the thing that the speculation tax is modeled on, only put in about 85 new rental units in a whole year. Like it only generated 85 more. Most people sold the homes, high-end homes, most of them, uh, over a certain, over a few million dollars value. So not exactly something the first time home buyer can afford. Yeah. They generated 85 rental units. That's nothing in a city the size of Vancouver. No, I, and I, I think they, they have lost sight of what really drives our economy, and powers any economy. Construction. Uh, and, and they, <laughs> it's 10% of our economy. Yeah. And they've lost sight of, of what it takes to attract talent and jobs and opportunity yeah. to British Columbia. And we're going to continue to pay the price as long as they, they basically focus, their activist agenda focuses on uh, ta increasing taxes, spending that money uh, in areas that aren't going to reap economic returns. And uh, we're all going to pay the price for this. Yeah. It didn't create. It's not good. So uh, we've been saying for a long time, winter is coming. Winter's here. Winter is here in Canada, maybe here in British Columbia sooner than later, which does uh, lend a little bit of credence to the idea of a fall provincial election. Get out, get in and out before the going is good. You know, you never know. I mean, this is, uh, you know, and this, the, the, the activist side of this government is very calculating. Uh, and um, so but nothing would surprise me. Um, so we'll see. All right. Anything else going on? Tim, uh, Tim McEwen, our uh, VP uh, policy, was in Ottawa twice this week. That's right. He was, he was busy. He presented... Uh, uh, Thank God we have Tim so that you and I don't have to go to Ottawa. Especially <laughs> when it's like minus 30. Uh, but he presented to a parliamentary committee looking at the impacts of regulations on small business. Uh, yep. A very important issue for our members and a very important issue for our economy. Highlighting the challenges that uh, our economy is going to be facing if... Bill C-69 is passed, which is going to make it very difficult for major infrastructure projects to be approved in this country, uh, highlighting the challenges we're facing. Uh, and it goes to affordability, which is the duties and tariffs on imported steel mm -hmm. products. Uh, that increases the cost of rebar. It increases the cost of uh, the aluminum, uh, aluminum siding and aluminum around yeah. window frames, uh, all ultimately which the purchasers of new homes have to pay. Yeah. Um, so all of these regulations, all of these taxes are hurting our economy. And so he, he gave a, 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 great, uh, a great brief to the committee. He presented before a different committee uh, that is considering the, um, uh, the ban, the tanker ban on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And the tanker ban on the West Coast to- The northern to, West Coast. Yes, is yeah. which would ban the shipment of oil uh, from Canada off the West Coast is, is, is kind of insane when you think of it. There's no ban, tanker ban on our, our, our northern coast or on our eastern coast just that one part of British Columbia. Um, and yeah, and the, the Americans The parts that the Alaskan oil tankers flow through yeah, constantly. Yeah, they, just, they and just flow through all the time. Would be great. no problem. Yeah, no, it's fine. They, so they can't be stopped by our... our no, it, it, again, it's like we're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. We're not, yeah. we're not increasing competitiveness. Yeah. We're not getting our... Uh, you know, there is no jurisdiction in, in the world that harnesses its resources more sustainably yeah. uh, than we do in Canada. And yet... Uh, we're not taking advantage of the opportunity to, uh, to export those resources. And, and it's the Indigenous people, the First Nations, who are some of, among the loudest opponents yep. of this tanker ban because uh, they want to invest in a project called Eagle Spirit and build a pipeline there, and this basically right. suffocates it in the crib. That's correct, yeah. Yep. So. 
All right, so uh, I'm sorry we don't have good news, no. but uh, the economic uh, problems are, are mounting. But I do have good news for you if you own a construction company. If you join ICBA and become a member, we can help you uh, navigate through the choppy waters that That's are to right. come. We have uh, health and benefit and pension plans that can help you save money to do that. We do public policy advocacy on your behalf. We can help you with training, save you some money there, and uh, make sure that your workforce is uh, ready to go to weather the storm. Winter is coming. Winter is here, but we can take care of you. That's yeah, right. That? You like the little promotion there? Well, too? we're like a sweater. We're like a warm sweater that's that you can right. put on. Sitting in front of a fireplace. But with more awards. Exactly. All right. That's it for us. Uh, ICBA.ca. You can follow us on Facebook uh, at the ICBA or on Twitter, ICBA BC. Chris is not on Twitter, not even secretly. Not even secretly. Not even secretly. Although we've been talking about maybe giving Chris his own Instagram account. Yeah. But I don't know what you would take pictures of. Yeah. What would you take? Well, you know, when we were in Dallas, I went to uh, uh, AT&T oh, Stadium and go. toured uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Went, went yeah, troubling news, troubling development here in ICB headquarters. There's a Dallas Cowboys flag in the office now, which yeah. is not a great, uh, not yeah. a great thing. Right. Don't worry, next year Super Bowl. Yeah, that's never going to happen. All right, uh, and stay tuned. We are working on an AGM guest speaker. Who knows who it'll be? Yes, it'll be Peyton good. Manning, Brett Favre. Who's next? Who's next? I don't know. It's well, going to be I an do, NFL. I, I do know. I do know a couple of the names. So uh, hopefully, yeah. hopefully one of we them land. accepts, and we let, we land the big fish here pretty quickly. All right, uh, icba.ca. Talk to you all again soon. Great. Have a great weekend.